This is Fortress News with Jake Zabel. So hello and welcome to Fortress News. I'm your host, Knight Jake Zabel, and join with me today is my underground reporter, Simon Shivey, coming down from, uh, reporting from Sydney at the 2018 Synod of uh, General Synod of the Lutheran Church of Australia. Simon, how's it going? Good morning, Jake. Good morning, listeners. So, we're now on to Saturday, for those who will be listening to this, and the Synod's been going since Tuesday, if I'm correct. Tuesday evening, yes. Cool. And so, first up, most people who've uh, looked on the internet will see the results of this already, but... For those who haven't seen it yet, what was the result from the women's ordination debate and vote? It was it was fairly comprehensively voting down. Um, I think last time we had a margin of about seven votes. This time we've had a margin of about of thirty. Okay. Um, so pretty convincingly defeated. Do you have the exact numbers there? Uh, n- not in front of me, I'm afraid. Uh, they are available online. I have seen them, seen them in other groups, posted on Facebook and such. Cool. So I'll, well, then I'll fill people in. The numbers, according to what I found online, was they needed 271 to pass the motion and they only managed to get 240. Which I think yeah. was about like um, 7% that they missed out by. Yeah, 6, six or 7%. Six or seven percent swing is my understanding. Yeah. Cool. So no. Oh, no I missed out by yeah. Right, I missed out by yeah. Yeah. So no women's ordination. That's great. No, not for another three years. I'm sure there'll be uh, another motion at some stage, bring it forth again. Um, my hope is that we give our time, self time to heal, um, come together as a church, um, gather our thoughts, and, and re-establish some relationships on both sides. I think that would be the best best thing at this. Uh, at this juncture, but uh, we'll see what happens moving forward. Yeah, so they haven't passed any motion so far to speak about it next time? Not at this stage, no. Um, however, I I do imagine something will, will, will come up and there will be a motion at some stage to, to look at the ordination question again. Okay. So just on some of the other issues that have come up then, or... Not issues. Um, some of the other things that have come up during this synod. So, can you just give me a short list of a few of the things else that have been voted on at this um, synod this year, and what were the results from those votes? The, at this stage, I guess the other major thing that's been voted on would be the governance changes. Um, they went through with uh, with a minor amendment just to um, uh, keep some accountability in the way that the LCA is structured. Um, there's others best better more qualified than I to, to speak on that. I guess what's on the docket today is more concerning for me and that's fellowship in uh, either the uh, Interna- International Lutheran Council or the Lutheran World Federation. Okay, so that's coming up today. That's coming up today and there's also um, a couple of motions to the floor looking into our professional standards department, the, our internal uh, essentially governance I guess you'd refer it to, um, um, and how we interact with each other um, as church. Um, Okay, I just lost you there. Response to the Royal Commission. Um, okay, yes, just, uh, can you just repeat that? I just lost you for a moment. Uh, yeah, so the other thing on the docket today would be church fellowship and uh, uh, an independent review into the um, um, professional standards department of the LCA. Um, We've had them, uh, we've had a representative from both the National Lutheran Council and the Lutheran World Federation here at this synod, mm-hmm. uh, and they've both given an opportunity to speak. Um, I was quite impressed by the um, uh, the I the International Lutheran Council speaker, um, mm-hmm. like very straightforward about but Australia's involvement in that group and uh, why we should move forward with them. Um, you're probably aware under the, in the thesis of agreement, which is one of the LCA's foundational sta- um, statements, um, yep. we were made clear of both those bodies, but there are motions put to Senate to join either or both. Uh, both. My understanding of both is out of the question. Yeah, I don't think you could do that. Yeah, there are motions to join either one or the other. Uh, now uh, I'm taking the middle road. I think we should stay true to the thesis of agreement on the matter, mm-hmm. um, but we'll see how it plays out today, I guess. 
So would the vote be whether we should consider joining them or actually voting on, like, which one to join? Uh, both. Um, okay. how, how it actually pans out on the floor today, I'm sure there'll be amendments or there'll be something that comes up today. Uh, I need to re reacquaint myself with what's actually in the book of reports mm -hmm. to get a better understanding of what's going on today. I've sort of been taking the book of reports as it comes. Yep. Um, and we'll see what, what comes of this uh, fellow, uh, fellowship question today, I guess. Okay, um, just a few other things then that have um, passed already in the last few days. So they voted on the bishop again? Yes, John Henderson uh, uh, convincingly won that election. Okay. And we'll uh, hold the, the bishop's chair for the next three years. So did was he, was there someone running against him? Matt Anker. Matt, Matt Anker was running against him. Um, I think Matt only secured one third of the vote, so it was a pretty convincing uh, win for the for the incumbent bishop. And uh, looks like we're moving forward with Bishop John Henderson. Yes. So I noticed on Facebook there was some Aboriginal reconciliation motion passed. Would you be able to tell me a little bit about what that is? Uh, it was adopting, uh, I wasn't actually present, I was filled in later on, um, just basically recognising reconciliation between uh, Indigenous Australians and the more recent arrivals. Um, as, you know, as you're probably aware, and um, maybe some of your listeners are, the LCA has been very involved in its history with the Indigenous community in Australia. Um, there are quite a number, or a number of Indigenous um, representatives from their congregations here at, uh, at this at, at this general con conference um, and it's good to have them here um, as to speaking to the actual procedures and the documents that were, were flawed I, I am not too familiar with those okay cool. um, and any other motions that have been passed during this synod this last week so far uh, there's been governance things early on um, Mm -hmm. They pretty much passed unamended, apart from, I think we spoke earlier about um, an amend, uh, amendment to some of the government stuff, yeah. just just to keep the the election election process uh, more transparent and more accountable to to the Senate. Um, essentially, there there's been nothing major on the docket. Um, obviously, the biggest issue was yesterday. The entire day was pretty much dedicated to the ordination question. And uh, moving forward today, we've obviously got the fellowship question and uh, the internal, oh uh, sorry, rather the, the independent um, review into the professional standards department. Um, there's a few okay, other cool. business matters on the docket. Um, I'm not sure I have time to get to them. Uh, I guess we'll see how the day pans out. So is uh, today the last day of the, or the business side of the Senate? Today should be the last day of business. Um, I mean, there is the possibility it will carry over to tomorrow morning. Um, should we not get through all the business today? Um, I'm not sure if that'll happen or not. Um, today was just tomorrow was just uh, essentially divine service in the morning, divine worship in the morning, um, and that that should have been the end of business. But uh, it depends if we can get to everything today, I guess. Okay. Well. We started with women's ordination. I might just try and finish up with women's ordination. Could you just give me a quick rundown exactly what was the general procedure of everything yesterday with how they did this vote on women's ordination? There was a motion from the congregation that the uh, um, some theologians and a lay person from the uh, synod be able to uh, give the case for the current teachings of the LCA. Um, there mm -hmm. was an excellent excellent address by the three speakers. Um, just setting forward uh, the order of creation and how that relates to the uh, ordination of men only um, and current practice and doctrine in the LCA. Um, we then moved on to the implications of uh, the motion surrounding the draft document uh, for the case of ordaining both women and men and uh, why should it not be church divisive. Uh, they addressed the church divisiveness issue first and um, carried on um, with open mic debates um, as to whether or not it's a good idea in the LCA to adopt the draft doctrinal statement. Um, this carried on for a number of hours, I guess, and uh, was eventually voted on late in the afternoon yesterday. And the mm -hmm. results came through probably about, if I'm not 
incorrect about six o'clock last night. Um, okay. To the re- to the relief of some, and very much to the uh, bitter disappointment to others. And uh, my heart really does go out to those people who are disappointed. Um, but on a personal note, I'm I'm glad that the current teaching stands at this stage. That's good. Uh, do you remember who the speakers were? Uh, yeah, uh, Adam Hensley. Uh, sorry, mate. The the the, the other names have left me at the moment. If I was had my documentation in front of me and I was prepared, I'd, I'd be better equipped That's to answer. All right. um, but it was well, two theologians of the church. Um, Adam Hensley, obviously a lecturer at, uh, at the seven, sticks in my mind. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, and Josh Josh Pfeiffer. Josh Pfeiffer also delivered, and I, okay, I yep. can't remember. The, I can't remember the um, the name of the lay lady. I'm, I'm afraid. Okay. And that yeah, that's Josh Pfeiffer from Bethlehem Lutheran Church in Adelaide. Uh, yes, I served in Brisbane at some stage. I think that's the same. There's only one Josh Pfeiffer that I know of. Yep. <laughs> cool. Well, that probably wraps up our report for today. And Excellent. I thank you, Simon, for coming on and giving thank, this report. Thanks for having a chat, Jake. You're welcome. Goodbye and God bless. Thanks, Mike.